Welcome back to the People's History Show. Let's get straight into another story from Scotland's past. In the 1970s, a music revolution was happening. Punk was taking over. Yeah, but after a bit of trouble at a Stranglers gig in 1977, Glasgow banned punk. But that had some unexpected consequences. movement is full of great stories as loud and as angry as the music itself and one of my favourite punk stories took place right here in Scotland. Punk was more than just the music, it was an entire attitude with its own clothes, its own language and its own way of life. When that way of life made its way to Glasgow, the city fathers did not know what had hit them. In the spring of 1977, the Stranglers played in the city halls in Glasgow and it kicked off. Legend tells of crowds rushing the stage, the band having to run for cover to the dressing rooms and the building being nearly collapsed by the pressure of punk. There was so much violence, so much trouble, that punk was banned in Glasgow. And the result of that, punk in Paisley. With Glasgow left out, the fans started jumping on buses and coming to Paisley to find the punk that they wanted. And the bands came with them, bands like The Skids, Elvis Costello and The Rosillos. Joe Callis, founder member of The Rosillos, who later went on to the Human League, remembers those wonderful days in Paisley vividly. I, th I think it was, the, it was the kind of direct simplicity, uh, particularly in the songwriting department. I mean, you, you were very inspired by stuff like The Clash and things like that. And, the, you know, it was just the kind of the bare bones of songwriting and it didn't need any frills. And, you know, that in a way, that's what, what was magic about it, you know. It was kind of mind-blowing, you know, the first time, I can't explain, the first time you ever heard New Rose by The Damned, seven-inch vinyl, bursting off a record player, it blew your mind, it was, it was fantastic. Paisley was a place that actually picked up on the punk thing very early on. You used to go and play a lot of obscure little places and you'd get guys still turning up in um, feathered haircuts and status quo on their jacket and uh, kind of Ned suits almost, but they'd be apologizing to you because they didn't have the gear. But they loved it, they just, it was just rock and roll to them, you know, they, but that was my favorite bit. So we've not got the gear on that, but <laughs> just, it's all right, it's about the spirit of it, you know. Hey! Paisley was ready for punk and welcomed it with open arms. Alan Corrigan grew up in Paisley and punk has had a massive influence on his life. We feel in Paisley there's always been a very, very strong culture of music, you know, and it dates back a long, long time. But punk was, um, it was all around us, you know, it, it was a, a statement as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, the crepe shoes and the tight jeans with the zips and the beer mats and different coloured hair. And, you know, for me what I remember most is that, you know, if you wear a punk, you were bad. <laughs> If you'd been in Paisley in the mid-70s, you could have seen The Exploited, The Skids, Billy Idol. We used to play uh, we used to play a lot in the Silver Thread. We used to play quite regularly in there, really, if we were playing in Paisley, that's usually where we were. Yeah. With the bands came the style, and the streets of Paisley were awash with safety pins, Mohicans, leather, whips and tartan. Bands came from all over Britain to play in Paisley. But there was homegrown talent too. There were the Pencils, the Mod Cons, the Mental Errors, and there was even Groucho Marx Records, Paisley's own punk label. Now, while punk may have died out elsewhere in the world, it's still loud and proud here in Paisley. Paisley was very quick off the mark, you know, in, in picking up on what was going on. And everyone was turning up with Derrigger punk outfits and stuff, yeah. It was quite a scene here, actually, at the time. Yeah. The punks in Paisley are still here. They've never went away, they've never changed their dress sense, you know, if anything, maybe some, you know, is parenthood and everything else kicked in and you forget about yourself a wee bit, but, you know, I think the legacy has always been there and it will live on and it's still very strong to this day. And I, there's a lot to look forward to in the town, yeah, definitely. <laughs>